Lately, I've been more in the tech aspect, so I do a lot of light designs, uh, help build the set, uh, mainly like that. I used to act and stuff like that, but mainly it's, it's uh, I work late nights programming the light board and hanging lights and focusing lights and all that fun stuff. Christopher. What I know about Christopher, I've, I've asked a couple of professors about Christopher and, and some things that students have said over the years. But basically, all I know about Christopher is that he was a student uh, probably many years ago. I don't know specifically what time, probably back in maybe the 70s, 80s. It was a long time ago. And he uh, had fell off a scaffolding or fell off the grid and died in the theater. And that's pretty much all that I know about Christopher. I don't know any details of like who he was, what he was doing or anything like that. I just know that you know, basically a student died and now he haunts the PAC. There's a tradition that we have for every show. Uh, the stage manager of the show uh, puts out a program and a candy bar for Christopher to eat the candy bar and read the program and enjoy the show. So as tradition for every show in, that takes place in the PAC, we put out a candy bar and a program for Christopher to read. It's only on the main stage. Uh, we also have we have uh, two performing spaces. There's the, the black box, and, and then there's the main stage, which is much bigger. Um, and it, the main stage has the whole grid, and it has you know, very tall, uh, all the lines and, and stuff like that, and all the battens. Uh, but as far as I know, nothing strange has ever happened to me or anybody else that I'm aware of in the black box. It's mainly just on the main stage. I did have an experience with Christopher. So I was working on, I believe it was Elephant's Graveyard, a show that took place it was, uh, a year ago from now. And I was the assistant lighting designer and 
we had we uh, I had brought the light board down from the booth out into the audience so it'd just be easier to see the stage while I'm out there working. So I had the light board out there. I was in the middle of the audience. It was it was probably around one in the morning. And there, there, there's been nights where I, I'll stay there until like four or five in the morning working on lights because that's the only time that I'm able to actually get all my work done without having actors or uh, people working on the set. So it was around one in the morning and uh, typically at that point, there's nobody else in the building. Security comes around between 10 and 11 o'clock and they lock up all the rooms, they lock up the building. So nobody, the only way you, have, you can have access to the building is if you have the key to get into the building. As far as I know, no other students have that key. I had a key that enabled me to get into the different rooms in the PAC, but not to get into the actual building after 10 o'clock. So it was one in the morning and the, the janitor, uh, Rhonda, who I, I knew at the time, she, uh, her shift ends between 11 and midnight. She, she's usually not in there until uh, till no, no later than midnight. And so I was sitting in there on the light board and I was programming, I was going through lights and I, I'm in com complete pitch dark and there's only lights on stage. And I had just a single light um, on in the booth that was, that was directly above and behind me. And so sitting there, I was listening to music and then I heard some footsteps going up the metal stairwell that we have going up to the booth. And it's very obvious uh, that there's someone walking up there because they vibrate their metal and it echoes throughout the whole theater. So I, I heard footsteps, I turned off my music and I heard them going up and up and up. And then so I, I turned around and I look over my shoulder expecting to see someone, uh, someone's shadow or someone peer out the window into the audience. And I sat there waiting and uh, it felt, it was very, it was very tense because I was like, nobody else should be here. And so I'm like, hello? No answer, no sound. And so I'm like, okay, it's okay. It's all right. So then I just, I turned around and I just started programming again. I just got back to work. I left my music off because I wanted to make sure I, I heard anything. And so I just resumed work and and then probably like two, three minutes later after I heard those footsteps, the door that goes into the stairwell on the bottom slammed shut. I, it startled me. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and and uh, see, the thing is though, like I heard footsteps going up. I did not hear the footsteps coming back down. Like, no matter, like, no matter how quiet you are on those stairs, it will vibrate and you will hear someone walking up or down. And so the door on the bottom slammed shut. And at that point I was like, all right, I'm done. Christopher is mad that I'm in here. He doesn't want me working this late. So I shut everything down and I got, I got out of there. <laughs> One of my stage managers, Shelly, and her assistant, Gavin, they were closing up shop one night after rehearsal and uh, one of the doors that, go that leads from the main the backstage on the main stage to the shop, at that one, that's always locked. Jim Daneker is the, the TD for, for the PAC and he always locks that door and that door can only be opened or unlocked with a key. So one night they were closing up Gavin goes over, shuts the door, locks it, and then he goes over to the opposite side of the stage to do something else, and then he comes back, and that door was open again. And Shelly was out in the audience, like, packing up her stuff. And so there's been instances like that where a door is left open, there was uh, a door closing, or there was a sound happening here or there. It's, it's mainly stuff like that that happens in the PAC. Just gives everybody the creeps.
I lived on second floor of Lourdes. I've heard the story about the nun, the priest, and the baby. So apparently there was a priest that had an affair with a nun, and she got pregnant. And when she became pregnant, she wasn't allowed to keep the baby. So after she gave birth, he threw the baby down the elevator shaft, uh, pushed her down the stairwell, and he hung himself in the church, which is now the pool. I lived in the stairwell, like off the stairwell, and nothing in our room ever stayed on the wall ever, which is apparently supposed to be something of the nun falling down the stairs. And there was also a woman in white in the corner of our room one night. I lived in Lord's third floor. I just heard about the nun and the priest. The nun and the priest had an affair and they had a baby and the priest threw the baby down the elevator and then pushed the nun down the stairs and then he hung himself in the church, which is now the pool. lived in Lourdes and we had some paranormal experiences. We did Ouija boards multiple times on the fourth floor. Like five of Almost them? Almost every time. Yeah. We got shocked in the morning. Um, there was a five-year-old, his mom, his brother, this girl, and this another girl. <laughs> we talked to one girl in <coughs> who was, what was she, beaten? She was, I think she was like, oh, um, I think the priest like raped her and then she got pregnant and then like she had the baby I think but she threw herself down the stairs on the north wing which was where my room was. Um, yeah we talked to her and then our friend moved her on or something because like the board was like strong and stuff and then it got weaker when she when he like told her what happened to her I guess and then she was gone. But she didn't like us very much, that's okay. She did tell us where her grave was though, because we asked, we asked about the local cemetery, and she told us it was the St. Mary's one, and then we were trying to figure out the location of where it was, and she was able to tell us, but we never When we were doing the Ouija board, we noticed that our phones or any like laptops or electronics that we brought up there would like the battery would drain significantly faster. And if the Ouija board was like kind of the spirit talking to us where it's kind of like slow and like slow moving, if we put a bunch of the power sources like near them, they like gain more energy and was able to communicate better. Sometimes the board would get stuck between like the letters A and Z and it would just keep going back and forth until we asked like a different question because I think it did that to questions it didn't want to answer. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it was, I don't want to say lighthearted, but like most of the time it was pretty not scary I would say. And then there was one incident when we were talking to the little boy and we were like, is there um, like a bad spirit somewhere in this building? And he said yes. And then we said, is it the priest? Because we heard about the story. And he said, yes. And then we said, is the priest in this room? And he said, yes. And that was kind of crazy. Kept going. I did. <laughs> I <laughs> set out. <laughs> also, there was a kid ghost who told her her jokes weren't very funny. I don't know if that's relevant, that's but that's, that's also bad. why she left. <laughs> <laughs> Over winter break, I left the Ouija board in my closet, which you're not supposed to do. But I did it anyway, and when I came back from winter break, there was like weird noises and whatever. It was fine though. My bedroom was on like right next to the stairwell that the girl who was attacked by the priest killed herself down. I think my room was haunted. I was like missing stuff a lot. Yeah, I have this, um, like I have jewelry in a little bag and I was gone for like I went to class and then I came back and like all my jewelry in the bag was like out of it. And that was weird. Our friend's room was on, she lived on one of the wings. So there wasn't, she was on the th third floor and there wasn't the fourth floor above her. You would always hear like footsteps, right? And, and like, like furniture moving like above her bedroom. Right above her bedroom.
I had a scary experience in the shower once. I was in the shower by my room, and there was only like two showers, and I was in one of them. And then I heard someone come in and like slam the door and like start the shower. And the shower ran for like five or ten minutes, and then they turned it off. But I never heard them leave. And then finally, I got out of the shower, and I was like putting my hair in my towel. And I noticed that the person, like the curtain was still closed, but like there wasn't any water, and they'd been in there for a long time. So I just like peeked open just to see, and like the water, which I heard it turn on, was never like the walls weren't wet or anything, and no one had been in there. But like I heard someone come in, and I never heard anyone leave. You could always kind of feel a presence in Lords. You always felt like there was someone else there. I grew up being aware of the supernatural and knowing its place in society and where we hold it and you know we us as human beings like we, we love the mystery we love not knowing things and trying to figure them out I think that there is something real to them but I don't necessarily know if it's like the actual person or not but I feel like there's something here I've had experiences growing up as a kid with supernatural stuff and I don't know if it was just me being a kid and seeing things, you know, my, my imagination going wild, which it definitely could possibly be, but there's something to it where it's like, where did I get that from? Like, I saw an actual ghost. Was that my imagination or was that, was that an actual ghost? I believe in ghosts. Yes, I believe in like supernatural, paranormal entities. Do I believe in ghosts? Yes and no. Like, we can never have 100% proof that ghosts exist, that supernatural things exist, because they're not, it's not, like, you can't grasp it, you can't touch it. And it's, we, we want to believe, and it's fun to believe, and it's scary to believe. And as long as you believing in something that's not causing anybody else harm or, or leading them astray, then yeah, by all means. I think that something might have happened here, but I don't think that that is exactly what happened because that's kind of a long shot. I like to think that there is a spiritual part of human nature, not, not just human nature, but, but uh, nature itself, that we're all connected in some spiritual way. I like to think that there is some sort of spiritual connection between people and people from the past and you know why stop there people from the future like like time isn't linear time is a circle we can't quite grasp the time and the fourth dimension and, and what's beyond that so so the, the possibility of spirits or what we call spirits or ghosts them existing like yeah like why not possibilities are, are endless 